The world's richest guy is set to buy one of the world's most influential social media companies. After weeks of uncertainty, Elon Musk struck a deal to buy Twitter at a price of roughly 44 billion bucks. But the question is, what's he going to do with it? Twitter is reportedly laying off about half of its 7,500 employees today, just a week after Elon Musk officially took control. Turmoil spreading tonight at Twitter, where there appears to be some kind of a mass exodus of workers who are rejecting Elon Musk's ultimatum to work extremely hardcore. Getting a Twitter profile verified is now as simple as buying a box of chocolates. The cost is $8 a month. Twitter will now charge $8 a month for its blue service. Hi everybody, on 27th October 2022, Elon Musk completed his acquisition of Twitter. And as soon as he took charge, he brought in some insane changes that have backfired so bad that they've become sensational news all across the world. While Elon wanted Twitter to be an ambassador of free speech, Twitter has now become an ambassador of hate speech. And the hateful tweets on Twitter have shot up by 4.7 times after Elon's takeover. While Elon wanted to democratize verification for all with an $8 price tag, the ones who actually paid for it turned out to be fake users who seem to have wiped out $22 billion in stock value from two major companies in the United States. While Elon wanted to make Twitter profitable with an $8 subscription, let alone profitability, 90% of its revenue is at stake right now because the biggest advertisers on Twitter like General Mills, General Motors, Volkswagen and 15 other big companies have paused their ad campaigns on Twitter. Advertising giant IPG has recommended to its clients, which include American Express, Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson and others, to temporarily pause advertising on Twitter. With Elon Musk at the helm of affairs in Twitter, the change of ownership of the microblogging site has raised some serious concerns amongst advertisers, as a lot of them are now distancing themselves from the platform. In the latest, the Omnicom Media Group, one of the world's biggest advertising firms, is recommending its clients to pause spending on Twitter. Twitter. And now, Twitter is losing $4 million every single day. And because of this, Elon Baba is now warning about bankruptcy. And this messed up drama, ladies and gentlemen, has some very, very important business lessons for us, the future leaders of our industry. So in this case study, let's do a deep dive and try to understand why is free speech way more complicated than we think? What is Elon Musk's strategy to turn Twitter profitable? And most importantly, what are the lessons that we need to learn from this superheated drama of Twitter and Elon Musk? But before we move on, I want to quickly thank our sponsors of this episode and that is IND Money. People right now, there's a major correction happening in the US market. And if you're someone who wants to seize the opportunity of falling stocks of Google, Microsoft and Tesla at this time, IND Money is a great app to do it. Peter Lynch says that you should invest in products and services that you use on a daily basis. And if you scan your own day, you will realize that every day we use all these American products and services like Google, Amazon, Apple, etc. With IND Money, investing in US stocks has two advantages. Number one, you can buy fractional shares that it is a small part of a stock and you also get the advantage of dollar appreciation against the rupee. The best part is you don't have to worry about commissions or brokerage when you use IND money to invest in US stocks. It's all free. No commissions on buying or selling stocks, no paperwork to open the account, no account opening or maintenance fee, no flat charges to load your US stock account and they even have the lowest withdrawal charges in the industry. There is a special link in the description of this video. If you sign up using that link and fund your US stock account, you will get free Apple stocks worth up to 1000 rupees on your first deposit. IND Money also helps you invest in US stocks via SIP mode. So you can start a weekly or monthly SIP with as low as 500 rupees. So if this sounds useful to you, click the link in the description and start your US stock investment journey with IND Money now. The first allegation that Elon Musk put forward was that there is a political bias in Twitter which goes against the principles of free speech. And even some of you must be believing the same because your feed has evolved a certain way to make you believe that. But you know what guys, not having a political bias on social media platform is practically impossible because if you look at the root cause of this toxic and biased content, it's actually very, very surprising. To tell you about it, let's try to understand how Twitter could actually cause a riot with no intent of doing so at all. 
This will help you understand the biggest ideological debate of the social media industry and that is between business viability and morality. So let's understand this using a story. Let's say there are 1000 people on the platform and these 1000 people are said to have moderate political opinion about BJP and Congress. Now even though all of them will say that they are neutral people, the fundamental truth according to behavioral science says that all of them will by default incline towards one party knowingly or unknowingly. So let's say 500 people are slightly inclined towards BJP and 500 of them are inclined towards Congress. And now, when these two groups of people start using Twitter, another psychological attribute actually starts acting, which is confirmation bias. In simple words, if you are inclined towards BJP, in order to reinforce your belief, you will by default click, like and comment upon a video that praises BJP. This is because it is a natural human behavior to confirm its bias through content. Similarly, if you are inclined towards Congress, you are more likely to click, like and comment upon a piece of content that praises Congress. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, the game of algorithm comes in. Now you see, for all social media platforms, the most important metric to promote a piece of content is engagement. As in, how many people click, like, comment and share a piece of content and which type of people will engage with which type of content more. So now, BJP inclined people start liking and commenting upon BJP positive and Congress negative content. And when this happens, three things happen. Their love for BJP will increase, their hate for Congress will increase and most importantly, the Twitter algorithm will know that Group A will engage with BJP positive and Congress negative content. Similarly, when the Congress inclined group start liking and commenting upon Congress positive and BJP negative content, their love for Congress will increase, their hate for BJP will increase and the Twitter algorithm will know that Group B will engage with BJP negative and Congress positive content. And this Group A, Group B categorization is what you call as eco chambers. As in, an environment where a person encounters information or opinions that reflect and reinforce their own opinion and thoughts. And this is where, ladies and gentlemen, the radicalization starts with a vicious cycle. Confirmation bias leads people to like and comment upon BJP positive and Congress negative content. And when this happens, the platform gets more engagement. So it shows them more BJP positive and Congress negative content, which leads opinions to become more and more stronger. And this leads to more confirmation bias, hence leading to more engagement. So as group A and B keep on consuming content based on their confirmation bias, their degree of inclination will go from slightly inclined to mindlessly inclined. And this is what gives rise to buds. As in, your love for BJP increases to such an extent that even if the party does something bad, you will desperately find illogical reasons to defend them. And at the same time, your hate for Congress increases to such an extent that even if Congress does something good, you will deliberately try to criticize it. And this is something that you can find very well with the uncles of our society and even in our relatives. Wow, Modi ji, wow. Wow. So after a certain point, you have an eco chamber with 500 BJP extremists and a chamber with 500 Congress extremists. By this time, the rage in these people is so much that all kinds of abusive words and extreme opinions have already started showing up on the platform. And once this rage gets pent up, not for 1000 but 1 crore people, you have 1 crore radically polarized audience on the social media platform. And now all it needs is a spark. This is when if an extremely controversial topic like the CANRC or a Mandir vs Majid debate comes up, all hell breaks loose. So all these 1 crore people during that time will start tweeting, hate comments start piling up, the topic goes trending, news channels start amplifying this matter and with a little more instigation, this entire rage manifests itself from the digital space onto the physical space in the form of riots. This is how, ladies and gentlemen, social media platforms can cause a havoc in a particular country. And by the way, this is not just applicable for BJP versus Congress, it also applies for wedge versus non-wedge, feminism versus male chauvinist and every other polarizing topic. Now the question over here is, why doesn't this social media platform try to show you both sides of the content? That way, a person can get to know both good and bad stuff about BJP and become an informed neutral citizen, isn't it? 
Well, as it turns out, it's not that easy. If the platform shows you both sides of the story, your engagement with the platform will drop and this will drop the user's time spent on the platform. And eventually, it will decrease the revenue of the social media platform. Why? Because advertisers pay less to a platform with less engagement. So you see, this is a catch-22 situation. To do business, they need engagement. To get engagement, they need to confirm the bias of the audience. But this confirmation of the bias leads to rage and polarization. And this is where social media platforms stand at the crossroads of morality and business viability. And the worst part is that the most extreme positive and negative content about both sides of these parties are not tweeted by actual people, but by something called social bots. As in, these accounts are specifically programmed to use certain hashtags and to post only a certain type of post with the sole intent to so extremist believe in the minds of ordinary people like you and me. And the fun fact is that because they're so cleverly operated by both machines and humans, it's very difficult even for the algorithm to spot these bots. This is the dark truth, science and mechanism of every single social media platform in the world. Now most people will be like, yeah bro, so what? When there is a debate between morality and business viability, the algorithm should by default choose morality, right? So why can't these platforms show things that are good for the society? Well, if you think morality is that easy, let's take a very simple topic of body positivity to understand the complexity of morality. For those who don't know, body positivity is yet another mega trend which says that regardless of how you look, skinny, fit, normal or obese, you should be comfortable with your body. So you have all kinds of advertisers, celebrities, influencers, all of them promoting body positivity. And this is where two very strong arguments actually pop up. One group of people say that body positivity is toxic and harmful. Why? Because they say in the name of body positivity, you're promoting obesity. So if people become comfortable with their obese body, they will never work out and they will eat junk. Eventually, it will lead them to all kinds of diseases. So they say body positivity is very, very toxic and is defending obesity. Fair point, right? But the other side of the argument says that there are people who are obese because they eat junk and there are people who are naturally obese or are obese due to medical reasons. Like if someone has thyroid, their weight goes up and down. So if you don't make them feel positive about their own body, millions of such people will grow up being insecure, leading to depression. Therefore, body positivity is absolutely necessary. Now my question to you is, where is the line? Is it right or wrong to promote body positivity? Well, guess what? There is no straight answer. For some, it's good. For some, it's bad. So the question is, how do you define the grounds of morality? And if you humans cannot, how the heck do you expect an algorithm with hundreds of millions of people with hundreds of debates to actually decide what is right and what is wrong for the society? It's practically impossible. This is the reason why the debate of free speech has been going on since 2000 years ever since the Romans. So one billionaire, one policy and one company cannot fix it. So Elon's goal of making Twitter a neutral platform without political bias or any kind of bias for that matter is next to impossible. And this brings me to the second or perhaps the most important argument of all and that is about free speech. And you must have seen that as soon as Elon Musk bought Twitter, the negative sentiment in Twitter spiked up. And you know this might actually offend a lot of people but I think free speech is a privilege that must be given to only a filtered set of people. And I'll tell you why. You see, if you give a loaded gun to a monkey, what is the monkey going to do? One time or the other, it's going to shoot. So if the monkey shoots at you and you die, who is the idiot over here? The monkey that shot you or you who gave a loaded gun to a freaking monkey? Now the question over here is, why did the monkey shoot? Because of two reasons. Number one, it does not have an identity to be tarnished, as in nobody's going to publicly shame the monkey. And most importantly, there is no consequence to him shooting a person, as in the monkey won't go to jail for shooting a person, right? Well, just like that, most people on Twitter have no identity to be tarnished and no consequence to bear for their radical actions of the social media platform. So while an influencer with a 100k following will be very careful with the tweets, a random person with 5 followers will never hesitate to throw radical shit on Twitter. But at the same time, when thousands, millions of such random people start hating and raging on Twitter, 
it leads to a disaster so the moral of the story is no matter how genius you are if you give the loaded gun of free speech in the hands of a slightly evolved monkey you shouldn't be surprised if you get shot on the face therefore censorship is very very important and when you apply censorship to 100 million people it is quite obvious that you'll end up suppressing both the right and wrong people therefore the truth is free speech is a myth and a billionaire cannot fix it this is the philosophical side of the twitter story by the way just to give you guys some solid research backing to whatever theory that i've stated i'm attaching a beautiful and intricate research paper from the indiana university and they have explained the concept of echo chamber and social bots with a beautiful real life experiment so if you find time do check it out from the link in the description if this is very very clear to you now let's move to the business side of twitter and this is where elon musk genius might actually start paying off Long story short Twitter in spite of having 238 million monetizable user base they could not become profitable with ads so as we all know Elon Musk came up with an $8 subscription plan for blue ticks so earlier if you wanted to get verified you had to be a renowned person the press must have covered you and you needed to have a high profile to get that verified badge on Twitter but then Elon Baba came up and said pay $8 and anyone can have the verified badge And guess what? This did not just lead to ordinary imposters, but even seemed to have wiped out 15 billion dollars from market cap of a pharma company called Eli Lilly. This imposter tweeted that Eli Lilly would provide insulin at free of cost, and immediately after that, Eli Lilly stock tumbled more than 5%. As a result, the company lost 15 billion dollars in market cap. Similarly, Lockheed Martin shares fell by 5.5% after an imposter said that they will begin halting all weapon sales to Saudi Arabia, Israel and the US. Now, this claim seems a little dicey to me because the entire defense index was down by 4.4% on 11th of November. But the point to be noted over here is that $8 subscription is great for imposters, but it is terrible for the stakeholders of Twitter. So the real question is how do you get people to pay $8 and provide them with a great value add in return and this is something that Elon and team have to figure out so let's do some math and see if this could actually become successful you see guys any subscription service is going to attract subscribers only when they have either of these three value adds to give save time ease of access to content or ease of access to people as far as youtube premium is concerned they charge you 11.99 dollars per month in the us but they save a ton of time by skipping ads and give you access to music content with youtube music but if you look at the value of twitter subscription any account paying 8 dollars will get a tick mark so does it mean that they're actually getting verified not really because the accounts that receive this blue check mark will not undergo any review to confirm that they meet the active notable and authentic criteria that was used before so apparently back then even a bot could have got verified on twitter secondly they added a feature that allows everyone on twitter to see notification from verified accounts in a new verified section so my question to you over here is are any of these features saving you time are any of these features giving you access to content or people no right then why do you think it will work In fact, it is quite obvious that it will backfire. So now, what remains to be seen is how will Twitter deliver value to justify the $8 subscription? But you know what, guys? If these people start paying $8 to Twitter, it could actually change the game for the company. To tell you about it, YouTube, which has a huge value to deliver, has about 3% subscription rate. With 2.6 billion users, it has 80 million subscribers. So, considering the same for Twitter, out of 238 million user base, if 3% of them subscribe, that makes up 57.12 million dollars per month and close to 685 million dollars per year now considering their 2021 revenue they stood at a loss of 221 million dollars so if people start to pay 8 dollars they will shoot up to 400 million dollars in profit if the same thing had happened in 2021 so without going ad free for premium subscribers if twitter finds a great value add for 8 dollars it could be profitable by next year itself but 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 there is one big problem and that is elon musk's people management thousands of jobs lost elon musk who now owns and of course runs twitter and now thousands of workers learning they have lost their jobs after being told to check their email reports tonight roughly half the company's 7500 employees around 3700 Twitter employees are going to be sacked by Musk. Elon Musk is wasting no time putting his stamp on Twitter. He fired a number of top executives just after buying the company for 44 billion dollars and taking it private. 
Now, as we all know, ever since Elon took over, the company has laid off 50% of the workforce, including the CEO, and even fired over 4,400 contractual workers. And guess what? These contractual workers also included moderators who were flagging and removing misinformation, hate speech, and other type of harmful content on Twitter. On top of that, the critical top management who were tasked with privacy protection, cybersecurity, and compliance, all of them have left the company. This includes Twitter's chief privacy officer, chief compliance officer, and even its chief information security officer. As a result, the platform is expected to become more and more toxic by the day. There's growing concern about misinformation and hate speech on Twitter since Elon Musk took over after reports of a spike in racist posts on the platform. Elon Musk took over Twitter and already there's an exodus of executives, advertisers, celebrities. Hate speech is up and just about everyone's asking, what now? This is a reason why the biggest advertisers in the United States, including Audi, GM, General Mills, Volkswagen, and even Pfizer, have paused their ad campaigns on Twitter. Which means ad revenue that makes up 90% of Twitter's revenue has been slowing down. Which is why now Elon Baba is warning of bankruptcy. This is the story of Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter. Now, the question over here is with all this drama, as future business leaders, what are the lessons that we need to learn from this Twitter saga? Moving on to the lessons, the first thing we need to learn is that giving free speech in the hands of an idiot is like giving a loaded gun to a freaking monkey. So if the monkey shoots at you and you die, you are the idiot and not him. But fortunately or unfortunately, since all of us have the privilege of free speech on social media, please don't use it like a monkey. Lesson number two, while good businesses focus on the price, great businesses focus on the value. In this case, you will see that while YouTube, Netflix and LinkedIn focused on the value and then put a price tag on it, Elon Baba simply focused on the $8 price tag with no underlying value at all. As a result, it was meant to fail. And lastly, always remember, while good businesses prioritize their numbers, great businesses prioritize their people. Because the truth is, with great people, you can get great numbers. But with just great numbers, you cannot get great people. And to demonstrate this, I am attaching a video on how Southwest Airlines dealt with the horrific 9-11 crisis. So do have a look at it and let me know what you think. That's all from my side to today, guys. If you learned something I will, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. And don't forget to download IND Money and fund your US stock account to get your free Apple shares now.